Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. We'd also be really glad if you'd subscribe to the podcast below in the description. Again, subscribe to the podcast below in the description. Do it now. Should the 49ers consider trading the 12th overall pick in the draft for Carson Wentz? Should anybody consider trading for Carson Wentz? Should the Eagles trade Carson Wentz? Rap Sheet tweeted this on Thursday. The Eagles are getting calls centered around quarterback Carson Wentz. And while Philly doesn't plan to deal him, they haven't hung up the phone either. You work with uh, Howie Roseman. Doesn't feel like a big hang up the phone on trade offer guy. Loves the wheel and deal. <laughs> you ever have those days you're like, well, I'm not hungry, but there's a little food in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, where the super, dis the super disciplined guy doesn't even attack the fridge. Howie looks in the fridge. And there are some stories rolling around, I would say, over the last six months. I, you could argue the last year about Carson and just his personality in the locker room. Uh, stories that have broken about him and Doug, which there really hasn't been a bad thing ever written about Doug's personality, right? I would say very, very well liked by players, coaches. Him and Carson clearly didn't get along. Uh, a lot of players over the years, year, years would be strong, but I'd say over a 12-month span, have there have been anonymous players come out and crush Carson. Uh, so you would say that I think it's very fair to say that it has not gone well for Carson in the Eagles locker room with some people. Uh, and that, that extends coaches, owner, just the whole, whole thing. It has not gone well. And then his play, I would separate that from all that crap, right? Because we have seen that in the history of sports. Like, I mean, one of my favorite players of all time is historically the biggest asshole ever, Barry Bonds. People couldn't stand him. His teammates... I guess one coach liked him, Dusty, because he was like a relative. Uh, the media, everyone hated him, except the fans. And then Barry liked himself. But he produced And the guy hitting like, in front of him liked him. Yeah. He when the game so started, good. Jeff Kent no liked him. Say, no one could say shit. To me, Carson's play is the complete opposite, where you go, listen, is it even worth the trouble? Now, this is where I think we have to separate the conversation, just what is his value, right? And I think... When it comes to the Niners, you go, do you want to give the 12th pick for a guy who's playing, I'd say, real, beyond awful? He's like the worst starting quarterback in the league. Obviously not. But then you go, would the Bears trade their first round pick for him? John Filippo is their quarterback coach. He was there when they won a Super Bowl. He likes him. Uh, Frank Reich clearly likes him, right? Was the offensive coordinator with him every day, like Filippo won a Super Bowl with him. Those teams are after you in the pecking order of the draft, and you go, I'd say the Bears are really desperate. I, I think in a heartbeat they would trade their first-round pick for Carson Wentz, right? It would be worth the risk for them. And the Colts, I know the Joey for Barstool loves doing these Andrew Luck things. We asked uh, Schefter about it, who broke the Andrew Luck story. Like, I would rather have Andrew Luck come back than Carson Wentz. But I don't think the Colts are holding out hope that he's going to come back. So I think that they would trade their pick in the 20s for Carson Wentz. So if you're the Niners, like your two twos, like a two this year and a two next year, if I'm the Eagles, I'd rather get a one now, right? So it puts them in a weird spot. Because I think right now his value is not the 12th pick. But supply, demand, and just the demand, given that the teams right behind you would be willing to give their ones, I think kind of make it complicated for the Niners. And the other thing that makes it complicated, because, you know, what you maybe think was Schefter told us he thinks if the Jets were to trade Darnold, he'd be worth a late first round pick. You go, well, if he's worth a late first, then Carson's certainly worth the 12th. The problem is that Carson's making a lot of like there's also this money factor that comes with Carson Wentz, right? That if it doesn't work, you're kind of locked into him for a few years from a contract. Standpoint. You're definitely locked in this year. But um, if you trade if you traded a first round pick. I would say at minimum you're in bed with him for a couple of years as the trading team, right? Yeah. What concerns me about him is not his play. Like, I mean, it's concern. His play is concerning. It's more so the guy. Like, is he coachable? Because here's what I know: he's going to need to get coached to be worth the twelfth pick. He's going to need to be coached. There's not a lot of evidence right now that he's coachable. Like you said at the beginning, to get into a fight with Doug Peterson, and when I say get in a fight, I don't mean to actually fight. I just mean to get into a power struggle with Doug Peterson is a red flag. 
given Doug Peterson's reputation. Um, and to, you know, have the story before they even drafted Jalen Hurts that it seemed like he was insecure about Foles and then he's insecure about Hurts. It, this does not feel like a guy that's a fit for any coach that values a competitive environment. And any coach that wins values a competitive environment. So is he a loser quarterback? Is that what he is? Like, does he only work in loser environments? I don't know. I know well, he's he won, like, but he's won before. I know. I'm not saying he's a loser. I'm just saying, does he work in the kind of environment that it feels like he would need to get into to get the most out of him? Because right now, Jalen Hurts is in Philly, and I wouldn't like it either if I was him, but when presented with the challenge, um, he didn't rise to the occasion. Yeah, he's got a massive red flag on him, I, I think, surrounding things off the field. My point is, me, if he had, like, the Foles – uh, scouting report on the guy. Well, I think teams would be lined up. For I him. would take the risk on the fact that he hasn't performed. But guy, I think teams are lined up for him right now. Now, at what price? But I think teams, I, I think there would be 10 plus teams willing to trade for him right now. And I think that would probably include the 49ers. Because as we saw after the 49ers got their ass kicked by Josh Allen, Kyle talked about the importance of a talent at that position. Yeah. And just how his mind had changed. I, I read Albert Breer someone tweeted it in my timeline that he thinks a big change, a sea change in the NFL has kind of been Patrick Mahomes and realizing he's going nowhere. And it, it leads to like, why would a team, why would a team like the Niners just roll with Jimmy Garoppolo or the Rams with Jared Goff? Like those guys, those type players that you can have some success with that aren't great, but are not terrible. You just usually roll with forever. And he's like, I think it's hard for these coaches that just want to win the Super Bowl going, I got no chance to beat that guy, whether I'm in the AFC or NFC, so I got to play him in the the championship or I play him in the Super Bowl. I, I, I can't beat him. I, I cannot. So I have to keep taking swings. Like McVay's like, listen, do I think Stafford is better than Mahomes? Of course not. But this guy gives me a dramatically better, higher ceiling. And that's to me how I'd look at Carson Wentz. His ceiling, through the roof. Now we could argue semantics like, is that ceiling still exist? Is he fixable? There have been guys in NFL history who, that have gone through tough times and bounced back. For example, like Philip Rivers had a couple low moments throughout his career and then would bounce back to have high-level Pro Bowl years. And I think Carson is a more physically gifted guy. Now, the Rivers teammates loved him. I have a, I know a guy that played with uh, Rivers. You actually know him too. And he said, like, he's – and he played in the league. He's still in the league. Played in the league for a decade. So he's by far my favorite teammate ever. And people that play with Rivers love Rivers. That And that's part of being a quarterback. Like, to me, part of acquiring a quarterback, and we nitpick Kyle because we think he's lower on the physical stuff. Like, Kyle, you got to shoot a little higher on the – he values the right stuff off the field, right? The right. work ethic. The, and I think McVay does too. Like, they don't have a problem. Like, from what I've heard, their issue with Goff wasn't like – Teammates love him, right? Andrew Whitworth's wife just tweeted out something the other day how he took it. Their son, their fish died to go I, get a I fish. Know, I just can't understand if that's the case, why they could talk about him the way they did. Yeah, because I, I just think I think the NFL is pretty cutthroat, guys. Well, there's no question, but you don't have to say those things that are borderline I, I know, disrespectful. I, I, yeah, they didn't think he worked that hard, though. Oh, okay, well, say, then that's fine. When, yeah. I, when I say he didn't work that hard, like he showed up every day, and I think he got there relatively early. But, like, they were expecting when I pay you $30 million and it's not going well, like, why aren't you beating me here? Did I, I uh, was listening to Veach talk the I heard, other day with yeah. Peter King, and he's like, I don't think people quite understand. Like, I got in the day after we won the AFC championship, and I get in at 6. That means Andy's already been there for two hours, you know, <laughs> Veach getting beat into the office. And he's like, I walk through the training room because I'd imagine there might be, like, where you park. Maybe you have to go through the training room, look over, and Mahomes already there. And I, I don't think Mahomes – and Veach is kind of right. He doesn't get talked about that like that, right? He's more like, oh, he's fun. He's just slaying it around. Yeah. He's just doing this. He's just doing that. I would imagine Mahomes – here's what I know. Andy Reid, in my experience, hardest worker I've ever seen, no close second. Andy values his work ethic to the highest degree. And I don't think they did with, with, uh, with Goff. But back to Wentz, I've actually never heard he doesn't work hard. His issue is more like with people, which is also really important. I, I don't know. I, I think it's very complicated. I would not have an issue, though, if the Niners took a big swing on this because I do think the talent and the upside, like the physical gifts, Jimmy can't hold this guy's jock with physical gifts. Yeah, I agreed. A few things. One, it's risky. The other, it'd, be, it'd be very, very risky. The I other don't thing, think it'd be risky for the Eagles 
to ever trade him to a potentially good uh, – Sean Payton, a Kyle Shanahan, they could make you look really terrible. Yeah, you better be sure Jalen Hurts is a starting NFL quarterback if you're going to do that. I wouldn't even – to me, it would be even less about Jalen and more like, you better be sure this guy's a shithead and he's going to suck. Yeah, but I'm just saying if if he turns out to be good, but you also – you just nailed your backup quarterback pick, you can live with it. But even if – what if Jalen's just, to me, middle of the road and this well, guy Well, that's what he like, – yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying like you well, can't – Well, the Eagles know that. They, they drafted him well, the second yeah, round. Then, then it is all about Wentz. Um, the other thing Veach, Brett Veach said in that interview, he looks in the training room and Mahomes is in there – with an iPad taking notes. He's not just there getting treatment on his toe. Like he's actively studying, getting ready for the next week. Um, his, his talent is worthy of trading a first, a high first round pick for, but I wouldn't feel good about it. And to your point, the Eagles aren't okay. taking two twos for him. How could you do How could you sell so low on a guy? Unless you're, unless you just want to get rid of him. But well, to me, the Eagles are in a spot where his value has never been lower Yet the only way you can get rid of them for a high price, right? They're in a they're they're in this like we'll wait it out, but we understand his value is low, but we're not selling him at that value because right now his play you could argue is like a fourth round pick or something, right? Well, and I'll add another problem to it, John. This guy doesn't play sixteen games. Like part of the problem with Garoppolo is he's always hurt. He would have this year. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah, he, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and it he didn't play 16 control. games before last before 19 and he didn't play 16 games in 17 i my my, my pushback on that night that's very fair because jimmy's an injury history guy too the last two years he's been healthy he played that full season he got the concussion in the playoff game and this year i think the struggling part the the problem that everyone struggled with him is he was healthy and just playing shitty now who knows maybe he would have got hurt in some of those games he got benched in but he he was playing right yeah, I'm just saying he has a he he has been hurt multiple times in the past. This is not I can, Stafford I can who's been hurt. Live with an ACL and, injury, he does have that back thing. Remember, it yeah, was a little weird. But it's like an ACL when it's the only thing you had. Okay, but then you add up to this and then to that and then. Remember, he was hurt in college. This is guy with multiple. We're talking about multiple red flags on a player that's not like Stafford had multiple red flags just in terms of physicality and is he can he really win? But it's like what you saw on film is what you were getting with Carson. I probably wouldn't. I, I wouldn't offer the 12th pick either. But I would not be – here's where I think you could be kicking yourself in a couple of years unless with that 12th pick you got like Trey Lance and he became like your starter. If the Colts or the Bears trade for him and then he leads them in the playoffs and is really good, you go, well, it, looking back, it was an easy decision, right? Because his talent – maybe talent's the wrong word because right now his talent on the field is not good. His like physical attributes are everything you want, right? It's what we're, everyone's talking about what the Niners need to get a Trey Lance, a Justin Fields, a guy with high ceiling physical attributes. Because his talent right now, actually, like throwing the ball, he throws to the other team a lot. So it, to me, his talent right now kind of encompasses his play. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where I think you need a reset. And sometimes, though, when they get a reset, like Randy Moss to the Patriots, they got him for a fourth-round pick. Like when John Gruden got Rich Gannon or Steve Young went to, you know, Bill Walsh. All These are not all equal to each other, but – Usually in those situations, you feel good. Like, God, I just bought this million dollar home for 500 grand. The Eagles are not selling you their million dollar home for 500 grand. Like, they're, they'll probably want like one five. Now, they'd be like, well, you might get something special out of this. And you'd be like, well, why are you giving this guy to me then? Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird, it's a very, very bizarre situation, which the Niners should be sniffing around and they should be. He's beat him a couple times, remember, Kyle? They've played him multiple times since Kyle's been here, beat him this year. Made that pass to Fulgham, remember, mm -hmm. down the sideline. Mm -hmm. He beat him a couple years ago when the Eagles were good and the Niners were bad. He beat the shit out of him, remember, in Philly. I, I just... Mike, John, again, I, it's not that I don't think Kyle could make him... I, I would actually be optimistic Colts Kyle could make, make him a good quarter. Yeah. Well, so if, that, if they would, that it tells us our answer. Like, if you want to get Carson Wentz, and I think the Bears probably would too, you got to get pick 12. Like, that's just the only way you could get him. I wouldn't. That, feel good that, about that to me is the conversation. He was a sixty. He was a fifty-seven percent passer this year, and does not appear to be loved in his own locker room. Yeah. See, I, <laughs> the problem would be you'd have to evaluate him on like two years ago film, and then you'd also have to look past some of the. He's and if you evaluated him on two years ago film, I'd say the same thing to you that you always say about draft picks. Like, why are we looking at the old film? We got new information. Well, he'd be a no-brainer acquisition, right? If you get for a third-round pick. Yeah, correct? it's buy part of buying low. Is actually buying low. 
I know. Because <laughs> the profit is in the purchase price, not in the sale. Yes. So. But with a, with a quarterback – you will never kick yourself for using a first round pick on a guy like the Rams if you if this guy plays well for you and he wins and gets you the playoffs, right? I, I mean, you could argue that you couldn't touch his talent. Like the 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 potential upside on what you would get for him is so much larger than what I think we you forget, guy. Yeah, me and you draft. remember when his rookie year when he was seven and nine, like they oh, played on Monday night loved football him. and and people were shitting on him. And we're we like, love guys, him. are you guys yes. watching this? I know. I'm with you. What happened to this guy? I, we, that, yeah, that's important to point out. We probably should have started the conversation with, we are people who loved him when people thought he was overdrafted. And I've heard stories, and you have a connection through it, that heard a weird story. That, there are weird stories out there. Guys, I've heard several not, weird stories from people who know. That are not flattering to a quarterback. Yeah. And uh, you need that at quarterback. I don't care about unflattering receiver stories as much well, as like, I care I'll, about I'll quarterback give you, stories. Like, there, there's a story out there with Jimmy Garoppolo that I think people have probably seen, and it's just kind of unspoken about that he could have come back and he never did, and he kind of tapped out on the season. Now, I'd push back and go, well, didn't have much to play for. You could justify that. But I've never heard, like, he's just an asshole to people or people just, you know, maybe he's not BFFs with every guy, but – the locker room did never turned on him like clearly it did with Wentz or even Goff, right? Those people yeah. and might did, have been a guy or two that didn't see eye to eye with him, but it felt like Wentz, half the locker room was like, this guy's a fraud, right? And to me, that's... Players openly made comments, too, that were like, are they taking a shot at him when they talk about this other guy's leadership, how much they like Foles, how much they like Hurts? Yeah. If you made a non-negotiable, like sometimes in the draft, right? Hitting women or whatever. You're just immediately off the draft board. And that's, ext- it's an easy one in the draft. Like, oh, this guy has three DUIs, like off the draft board, right? Just stuff like that. If you just had a quarterback non-negotiable, any stories about consistently molt several players from several different positions, hate a quarterback, just don't even fuck with them. Yeah. I think you'd be right more than you're wrong. I think so too. So I'm good. I'm good not doing this deal. But if if suddenly it happened, I mean, we'd make 27 videos. I I do think we would. You would keep, and every team that could have got them would watch it very closely. And you could it could be one of those where I, I saw this Instagram ad in my feed that was like, this guy teaches a class, and it shows like the three stocks he invested in. It was like Amazon, Apple, and Facebook, all when they were like two dollars. Like, listen to this guy. He gets in on it early, and it'd be one of those like, oh my god, we could have yeah. had Carson. Let's just even say it was a second round pick, and he wins an MVP for his team in the next couple of years. But I don't think Amazon's been two dollars since like nineteen. I, I know. Now thinking about it, they were all. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't quite. Add, it might be just a complete lie. Amazon was three hundred and fifty dollars in like two thousand and one. It's now this what thirty five hundred. This guy was old. The long game, baby. <laughs>